Hey guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about the other supratentorial tumors. We will start with meningiomas. So they are the most common benign intracranial tumors. They are slow growing. And as the name suggests, they arise from the meninges, the arachnoidal cells of the meninges. They're extraaxial, which means outside the parenchyma of the brain, and they are well vascularized. They can arise in the sphenoidal ridge or the olfactory groove or the sylvian fissure in the posterior cranial fossa, the middle one, cerebral pontine, even supracellar, tentorial, etc. This is what the gross anatomy looks like. You have three different grades of meningiomas. Grade 1 is benign, grade 2 is atypical and grade 3 is malignant or anaplastic. The malignant ones are meningoblastoma and meningosarcoma. This is CT. You can see in the left lobe a meningioma. This is an MRI T1 weighted image, meningioma in the right lobe. This is the T2 weighted image of the same tumor. This is a T1 weighted image plus contrast of meningioma. Here is another T1 plus contrast in the parietal lobe. Depending on the localization, you can have seizures, dementia, difficulty speaking. If it is in the olfactory groove, you can have anosmia. If it is next to the optic region, you can have difficulty seeing. The problem with meningioma is it can lead to invasion of the bone, hyperostosis, and once it invades the bone, removing it, complete excision, is quite impossible, and usually chemotherapy is ineffective. Now moving on to the tumours of the ventricles, starting with the lateral ventricles. The tumours can be choroid plexus papilloma. This has Grade 1, which is the choroid plexus papilloma, grade 2 is atypical and grade 3 is carcinoma. It is cauliflower shaped on gross anatomy. It is more common in childhood and in pediatrics it usually occurs in the lateral ventricles whereas in adults it is more prevalent in the fourth ventricle. This is a T2 weighted image of a choroplexus papilloma in the lateral ventricles on the right side. The flare, it diminishes or reduces the effect of the CSF on the image so you can see it more clearly. And this is a T1 plus contrast. I've already spoken about meningioma. Cholesteatoma is like an epidermoid cyst, so it consists of squamous epithelium. It is known as cholesteatoma because it can have cholesterol deposits. It can either be congenital or acquired. And because it is close to the ear and next to the tympanic membrane, it can lead to conductive hearing loss, otorrhea, or dizziness. Excision is often performed with tympanoplasty plus mastoidectomy, even ossicular reconstruction depending on the extent of the disease. This is a T2 weighted image of a cholesteatoma. You can see on the right side and this is a T1 plus contrast image of a cholesteatoma of the same tumour. I have already spoken about ependymoma as well in my last video. Third ventricle, the tumours that you can have. Colloid cyst, it is quite small. You can see in this picture, it's a CT. And it's not really invasive or does not obstruct the ventricular system, so it does not really cause hydrocephalus. Then you have choriocarcinoma, which is a metastatic disease, so it is invasive. 
you have teratoma. Here you can see a large mass, looks like an immature teratoma, compressing the right ventricle. Another way you can differentiate between the MRI weighted images is in T2, you have the CSF or the fluid in the brain is going to be light in color, whereas in T1 or T1 plus contrast, it's going to be dark. On to our last tumor for today, pineoloma or pineocytoma. It is a benign, slow growing tumor, mainly in adults. Here you have a T1 weighted image. You can see a small mass. The same mass in T2 weighted image. You can see that the fluid is light. The same mass in axial flare. And the same mass in T1 plus contrast. You can see the fluid is dark, which means it is T1. And here is a sagittal view of a pineoloma T1 weighed image. Alright guys, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.